You always have to know your adversary. He will come to you with a lie, and he will plant it in you so you can turn around and see what they doing to me. He going to always point the finger at they. Now, as soon as he say they, you ought to know that's not God. That's not him. Because the love of God does what? Covers. If you're walking in the God kind of love, you've been done an evil to, you don't even take it into account. That's what I said when I said, Sister Ruth, about being Jesus. You really want to be like Jesus? Do you really want to be like Jesus? Somebody do you wrong, you don't even see it. Don't even talk about it. Don't take it into account. You want to be like Jesus? Yeah, okay. That's the reason why I tell you a lot of times the Lord said, here, do you read it? And I said, no. Or he'll start revealing stuff to me, and I just have to get up and walk away. It's like, Lord, I can't handle this. No, you can't. What he's trying to tell you, you can't, but I can't. You don't need to walk away. I give you a vision, show you what you have to do. You don't have to walk away because the minute you try to do it, you're going to fail. So then I stop looking at, I can't, and Lord, this is just too much. No, once you keep your eyes on Jesus, it's like the whole universe opened up to you. And there ain't nothing you can't do. Because why? You're not doing it. Got the grace of God working with you. I'm not laboring. It's the grace of God that's laboring with me. All right, let's get in the message. Come with me to Matthews 3 and 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? John baptized with the baptism of repentance unto the remission of sins. So then when people came to be baptized by John, what they would do is confess their sins, and he would baptize them. They looked forward to the cross of Christ. So they did have salvation, just like we have when we received Jesus, we look back to the cross. The Jews had salvation because they looked forward through the cross. Every time you read through the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all back in the Old Testament, you're seeing where Jesus actually was prophesied about going to the cross, and that gave them a hope to look forward to the cross. So then Jesus had to be baptized by John. Remember now, he came down from heaven through the incarnation. He was made in the likeness of sinful flesh, but he was without sin. And so John said, no, 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 uh-uh. I need to be baptized of you and you come into me. There is a humility in serving the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, like he shows you things, you feel like it's not that I'm not worthy. But you don't want to get to a humility where there is a pretense of. You understand? If I said, Sister Deb, I want you to do so and so and so and whatever. You say, oh, Sister Lee, no, I'm not worthy. I can't do that. See, that's a lie, first of all. It's a lie. What the devil has fooled the church people with you are so humble, you know, he put this sickness on me to cause me to be humble or this happened to humble me. That's nowhere in the Bible. The blood of Jesus took care of that. There is a humility in which you do not exalt yourself. There is a humility where you do not operate in self-confidence, self-exaltation, and pride. We're talking about that in that instance. So John wasn't operating in pride or anything. He just got humble. Here you are the savior of the world, and you coming to me. I need to be coming to you. So the first thing, you got to find out a spiritual need. All of us got spiritual needs that only Jesus can meet. You can't ever think you so high and mighty and you have the word of God and you this, even though you may get a reputation given to you of the Lord, but you can't get high-minded. You have to stay low. And humble before the Lord. Why? His great providence working for you. Working in you. Leading you and guiding you. You ain't your own. I humble myself under your mighty hand that you may exalt me. When? In due season. So you don't get in no hurry. You learn. Learn who? Learn of Jesus. Don't care what situation you're in. You learn of him and from him. That is why he has us here. This is the only way you're going to be able to conform to his likeness and his image is through his word. Verse 15. And Jesus answering said unto him, suffer or permit it to be so when? Now. John, I myself am in a state of humility. He didn't say this. I came down from my throne of glory. 
and took on sinful flesh. This is a state of humility. He had to learn obedience. Who did he have to obey in heaven? Nobody. He had to learn obedience. Even what? Obedience to the death of the cross. He said, permit it so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. To fulfill all righteousness. It becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus Christ was made what? Righteousness for us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This is to justify what God did. God put him on the cross. So now he's doing what man was doing back at that time. John was the forerunner. He came to testify and preach that there cometh one mightier than me, whose shoelaces I'm not worthy to unloose or to tie up. So when John said, I want you to baptize me, he was talking about over here in Matthews 3 and 11. This is what he was talking about. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Not the shoelaces on time. I'm not even worthy to carry his shoes because his feet is so holy. Oh, Lord, where is his feet? They in me. Every time I walk, he put his foot down. <laughs> Every time I put my hands on something, it's Jesus' hand. Even my thoughts. I'm telling you how refined it's getting. I mean, it's getting fine. It's getting so fine. Jojo came, we talking. I said, how's the chlorine? So, he takes a little strip and all that kind of stuff. He said, well, it needs some more. I said, you sure? He said, yeah, blah, blah. And it's been running. And I said, yeah, for seven days. And then right then, see, it's getting fine. Why did you say it like that? What was the purpose? I mean, right then. So I said, oh, Jojo, forgive me. He said, for what? I said, I didn't have to bring up what happened seven days ago. It ran seven days. It's just getting that fine. But see, you have to be what? Conscious of it. By your words. You're justified. You judge your own self by the words that come out of your mouth and wondering, why is this happening to me? I'm telling you, it's good. I said, now how come I ain't recognize all this all these other times? It's time permitted to be so now. Now. For us to fulfill all righteousness. Your brain is a physical organ. Your brain can't create nothing. Your brain is dead to the things of God. As a man thinking where? In his heart. Your spirit man. Your body is dead. It got a sentence of death in it. Why in the world you going to let your brain lead you and your body lead you when it's dead? Now you got to understand this. Your spirit man expresses itself through your members. So does the devil. See, when you get the knowledge of something, you got to practice it, and you got to apply it. You cannot get the knowledge and don't put it in practice. It will corrupt you, because you know to do, and you don't do it, it's sin. In verse 11, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. All right, so that's the baptism John was talking about. Now, back over here to Matthew 3 and 16. And besides, don't you know righteousness is a divine requirement? It's a divine requirement. Every act you do should be an act of righteousness. You can't let your brain lead you. Your brain only records what it sees. And then what it sees, it goes down to the spirit and the spirit in you interprets it. If you got God in you, when you see stuff, the word of God will interpret it for you and you'll have no malice about it. If you see stuff with your brain and your eyes and you ain't got no word in you, you go receive it as it coming against you and you go fight against it. God always judges us on how we react to external things. Are we going to act towards that in his ability or are we going to take it on for ourselves? Amen? Uh huh. So he says in verse 16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, he went straightway out of the water. I always thought they baptized and he went straightway, but he went straightway out of the water. Why? He had no sins to confess. When he got baptized, he left to do what he had to do. This baptism was his official entrance into this earth realm as prophet, priest, and king. His official debut, his announcement came through when the dove descended. And Jesus, when he was baptized, he went up straightway out of the water. No sin. He had to confess no sin. What is going to confess? 
And lo, the heavens were open. Why? Because when man sinned, the heavens was closed up. Now we got a man on the scene. Knowing he was destined to die and bring forth the covenant of redemption. The heavens open. Now man could have communication with God. Sin had shut heaven up. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the spirit of God. John saw this now. Jesus saw it. And guess who else saw it? The people that were standing around. They don't say that. But if he's making a public debut and he's being announced into this world, they saw it. The only ones that saw it was those that believed. And if you came to be baptized of John confessing your sin, knowing that John was the forerunner, you believed. And so you saw And lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Why a dove? He chose a dove because a dove is harmless. A dove is inoffensive. He's not a prey, not an eagle, buzzing, all that kind of stuff. When they offered up sacrifices, what they did? Offered up a what? Turtle dove. Noah, when the water started going down, he sent a dove out and came back with an olive branch. The dove is a symbol of peace. And Jesus came to make peace. He came so we could have peace with God and the peace of God. He came to reconcile us unto the Lord Jesus Christ, restoring back to us what Adam lost, bringing us with an attitude that's pointed towards God and not away from him, even bringing us a new disposition, the one of the life of Christ in us. You are offsprings of God. You are his children. Well, if you his offspring, as Jesus said, you are God. But how do you think? You got to think with the mind of Christ. Everything we do in this world is on a low level, especially if God's not involved in it. It's on a low level. And he know this. That don't bother him. He want to know what you're doing with him. Because I find out once you start doing with him, you don't do the other stuff. You don't want to. It's just like, what other stuff? All right, so now we got the dove descending on him, and Jesus Christ got the spirit of God without measure. I'm in him, and what he got, I got. And the spirit of truth not only tells us things, but he also shows us things to come. I believe this. Whatever Jesus talk about or whatever the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, hears, he tells me. And he said, I will also show you things to come. I believe that. So now, if all things have been delivered to Jesus and I'm in him and I'm an heir and I'm a son of God, Jesus got the spirit without measure. In Christ, I have the spirit without measure. Outside of Christ is the wrath of God. Inside of Christ is reconciliation to the Father. So people that's on the outside of God, they're going to get what? God's wrath. And so the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting up on him or resting up on him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, now we go hear God speaking. A voice from heaven saying, God the Father, this is who? My, my, my son. Now what do you think he'd be saying about us? This is my beloved. These are my, my children. He telling the whole spiritual world. He minds, I own them. I own them, not you. So now he's been announced in his office. The father got a divine passion with which he delights in his son. See, the father has a love towards us that you can't even fathom. He loved us when we was dead in our trespasses and sin. Now that's a loving father because you got some mamas and daddy that ain't going to love you. So here we go. He said, this is my beloved son. Now, Jesus is here. To undertake a work of the salvation of man. See, that's why it says God is the God of my salvation. See, all things are possible to him that believe it. Salvation is only possible through Jesus Christ. So now he's undertaking the work of man's salvation. He knows that the covenant has to be established. But he delighted to do what? The Father's will. Didn't bother him. He delighted to do the Father's will. Who will? The Father's will. Your will be done, Lord, in my life here on this earth as it is in heaven in Christ. That's what that means. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. You got to exercise your will towards things of the Lord. You have to exercise your will. 
Then when it falters, you know it falters. I didn't beat myself side the head because I did that. I learned from it. I said, I'm exercising my will. Okay, let's come over here to Matthew 28. Look at verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went away in Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but somewhat doubted. It's not you trying to understand people because you ain't, you can't understand. I don't understand why. No, you'll never understand them. But you understand human nature. Always understand human nature. It's either going to be of God or the enemy. Ain't no in-between. Not for a believer. You don't have no in-between. You're going to either do or you ain't going to do. Now, once you see what you need to do and you start doing it, and you might go back a couple steps, but that's all right. You keep doing it, then you won't go back. See, then the Lord is working to establish things in you. He's working to order your steps. And you got to let him. And you got to trust him. And you got to believe him. And don't doubt. Verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All authority. And he took that power and he delegated. So now what that mean? That means if he got the power, like he got the spirit, I got the power too. Everything has to be in line. Some people just want the power and don't want the rest of it like that sorcerer. I'll pay you if you give me that authority and that power to lay hands on people so they can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You go after Jesus in all of your whatever you're doing. You see Jesus himself. Then all other things fall in line. Don't be seeking this so you can have that. Don't get involved in your personal spiritual holiness. It's rotten. (laughs) Don't do that. All right. Then he says in verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations. See, he put teaching and preaching and all that first. He put teaching first. Then he says, teaching them what? Baptizing or immersing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. We find out that it is Father who takes us and baptizes us into the death and burial of Jesus Christ. Whose death is it? It's Jesus' death. Who's buried? It's Jesus' burial, so it's in the name of Jesus. Then we find out that the Son is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost with the initial filling of the Holy Spirit, and you begin to speak in tongues. So this is the first sign. The first time you spoke in tongues, the Holy Ghost gave you the utterance. You ain't never spoken in tongues, so he gave you the utterance. After that, he expects you to initiate it. And he'll take hold with you. You don't step out. He can't take hold with you. You step out high in the flesh because your intent is to please the Lord. Then the Holy Ghost says, oh, let me help you. Oh, I got grace working with me. Righteousness. Everything working with me now. What we going to do? We going to promote Jesus. We going to testify his love. We going to preach the word of God. Then when it comes to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost takes us and baptizes us into the body of Christ. This is a legal position. I'm in Christ. Whether I know little, whether I know nothing, or whether I know much, I'm in Christ. That's a legal position where the enemy can't put his hands on me unless I go on his territory. And then the Lord says, they ain't got no sense yet, so he'll cover you. (laughs) You ain't even got to ask him. (laughs) He says, teaching them. To observe, see, to observe me to do, not just to look at, not just to hear all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. See, he's with us. He ain't going to never leave us nor forsake us. This is for the church, even to the ends of the world. Okay, now come with me to Acts 10th chapter. This has to do with Cornelius. I like to bring understanding. I never get in a hurry and try to finish something. I want you to understand what has been ministered to you already. Even if it's concerning your brain and your body. Don't let your brain lead you and your body tell you what to do because of your feelings and your emotions and all that. You're placed under the authority of the word of God by the Holy Ghost. You have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you got the presence of God in you. You want to be what? Spiritual. When you receive Jesus, baby, that took you out of the carnal class and put you in a spiritual class to live a spiritual life. Okay. So Cornelius, he gave much alms and he prayed. He prayed the best of his ability. Don't you know God heard that? Because I already had said that the Gentiles was going to come in. That was prophesied under the Old Testament about the Gentiles coming in. Then he had a vision. Let's go to verse 40. 
Talking about Jesus. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Now you got to understand, Peter is preaching to them. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses. Chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And Jesus commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick or the living and the dead. Now, see, they preaching. They preaching, they teaching. Grace working with them. You can't do nothing without grace. You don't frustrate the grace of Jesus. Having then gifts different according to grace. One man had five talents, another man had two, and another had one. But it was given to him according to the ability of God. What I'm saying, you can't operate in somebody else's. You got to operate in your what? Own grace that God gave you. We don't need but one sister Lee. We don't need but one sister Ruth. We fit together as a puzzle. All I want you to do is learn how the spirit of God works. Learn how the Holy Ghost works. The word is the medium through which he works. So now, if you ain't got no word, I don't care. The Holy Ghost can't work with you. He works through the word. The word has the divine life in it. It is called the germ cell, which is nothing but a what? Seed. So the Holy Spirit works through it. This word is the medium through which the Holy Spirit works through to make it real to you. You ain't got no word in you. How the Holy Ghost going to make it real to you? Then you'll be playing these spiritual games. We ain't got time for that. Look in verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness that, what? Look here, through his name. Everything is through his name. What does his name represent? It represents everything that Jesus is. It represents his character. It represents his nature. It represents his essence. His name, everything is in the containment of who he is in his name. His word. He exalted his word above his name. Why? Because his name is a what? Word. That's the only reason why. He and the word is the same. So now look. It says, whosoever believe it in him. Look what it says. Whosoever believe it in him shall receive remission of sin. In the Bible, over there in Acts 18 and 27, there's a phrase. The phrase says, believe through grace. Acts 18 and 27, believe through grace. See, when I pray, I don't pray to prepare myself to minister. I don't do that. I pray and exercise my prayer, grace. Because you can't even pray without grace. I pray for to have the grace that God give me to bring forth what is necessary. A life of grace is always and only a life of faith. The life of grace is always and only a life of faith. The just shall live by faith. You can't live by what you have and don't have and can't see. You can't do that. You bind in God's grace. See, you want power with who? God. And he'll give it to you through me. He'll give you that power. You want to learn to trust him. Trust him. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, by grace are you what? Saved. So now you can see the life of grace is always and only a life of faith. How do you have access into this grace? By faith. So you can't separate them. Every time I get up here, I get up here by faith. Believe the Holy Ghost is going to show up. Preaching the word, believing the word going to come out. All I got to do is just digest it, digest it, and he going to bring out what's necessary. I don't have no plan. You know I ain't got no plan. I, I, don't, I don't, Okay, let's get to this part now. You got a relationship with Jesus. That relationship should be when? Every day, moment by moment. The moment by moment means that he's keeping you, don't care what you're going through. You got to believe. I don't have to think about him. I don't have to feel him. I know because I believe he's keeping me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe. It is your duty and unceasing duty to what? Believe. Well, what about no? He said believe. Believe. (laughs) Believe. All right. So in your relationship to Jesus, the one daily and unceasing duty of the disciple is to believe. Why? Because believing, it is a work of God. I ministered on that. 
Because believing is the one channel through which divine grace and spiritual strength flows out into the heart. See, believing. Whosoever believe. Now, when you believe, what's accounted to you? Righteousness. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Yes, indeed. Believe. If you believe, what you believe in? When you believe in, you believe in the word. Every time you partake of the word, you're partaking of the divine nature of God. When you partake of his nature, that means something else working. You're escaping the corruption that's in this world through lust. Now, what reigns through righteousness? Grace. See, you want to fill yourself up with the word of God, but under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Brother John, the Lord got something for you to do. And he said, you ain't going nowhere. You'll be right here. Because this is the only place you have the liberty to where you can express yourself. So now he's going to work something. He's going to work. I don't get in a hurry. I don't get before the Lord. But he's going to work it where you can have a day to minister every month. And then we'll go from there. But he wants you to know. He knows you. And he got things for you to do. What he's doing now, he's moving you out of one condition into another. And it's a process. See, the Lord always got to deliver us from where? From who first? Ourselves. So are you just, just be cool? That's Sister Lee's loose translation. <laughs> and wait, wait patiently on the Lord. Don't get in no hurry. Whatever the opportunity they open for you to do, you do it then. You need to do something, you do it then. And he'll lead you and guide you in it. If you do leave the church, Brother John, it's because the Lord is sending you into another facet of ministry. Other than that, you don't leave. Okay. And he would tell me, Brother John is being sent to uh, such and such. I'm giving him a ministry. I want you to lay hands on him and separate him unto me. That's how he works. Amen. Uh, you read the Bible. That's how the Lord works. He's going to let me know. Well, Sister D, the Lord is leading me to lead this church. Why? You've been under my tutelage all this time with the Holy Ghost. Why he tell me? No, you leave because you want to leave. Amen.